Before we get started into our training sessions, I wanted to have you work with a small project that will incorporate some of the basic functions of AutoCAD. Don't worry about understanding everything here or anything really. This project is meant as a sort of icebreaker, like an activity at an opening of a party to help guests get to know one another so that they can enjoy themselves more. We'll start AutoCAD if you haven't already. Now press the F8 button. The command line down here should say ortho on. If it doesn't, press the F8 button again until it says ortho on. This setting forces lines to be drawn horizontally or vertically. Now let's start the rectangle command that's right up here. If you don't see that box, click this arrow and pick rectangle. When I say pick, I mean a left click. If you need to right click, I'll say right click. We're going to pick our first point, and you can pick anywhere, it doesn't matter right now. Pick a point, and we're going to make this rectangle 50 units wide by 30 units tall. So well, how do I do that? Well, as you move your mouse around, you'll see it's asking for a second point for our rectangle. We see the dynamic box there, as I move it to the right, what's highlighted in blue on my screen says 10.0899. If I go to the left, it says 4.2578. Well, that's my horizontal distance for my rectangle. I want that to be 50 or 50 units. Now press the tab key, and it takes us to the other box. I want that to be 30 units, so type in 30 and press enter. Now double click on your scroll wheel. That will perform what's called a zoom extents. It zooms all the way out so that you can see everything in your file that you've drawn. You can use your scroll wheel on your mouse. If you scroll it back and forth, you zoom in and you can zoom out. You're not changing the file in any way. You're just changing the way you're viewing it. If you click and hold the scroll wheel, you can pan around. Again, you're not changing your drawing any. You're just changing on how you're looking at it. Now we're going to use the offset command. Come up here, click on the ribbon, click offset, and then type in 0.5. It's a decimal point, then the number 5. Press enter. Pick anywhere on the rectangle, left click, and move your cursor, the crosshairs, to the inside. You should get a little preview of what you're going to do. We're copying that line work and offsetting it or making a parallel copy five units away. Click with the left click somewhere inside there. Now press the escape key. The escape key will cancel a command. You're going to find out that you're going to use it quite a bit. Now let's open up the tool palettes. Press control and three at the same time. This is a palette. They're very useful and there are many different ones that we can use. Click on the architectural tab. This will bring up a set of blocks. Blocks are sets of line work that are grouped together to act as one unit. You can use them many times, copy them, rotate them, and just copy and copy and copy. So in cases like this, we want to pick a door block. Let's go up to the door imperial, click it once. You may have to wait a few seconds. And then click again. Now if it comes in really big like this, that means we have a problem with scale. Some of our units are not set up correctly, but that's okay for what we're trying to do. So we're going to use the scale command, start it up right here in the ribbon, click the door, press enter, pick a point anywhere near the door, and then put in 1 slash 12. Press enter. And the problem is the drawing we're using here was set to feet, and the block for the door was set to inches, and so AutoCAD automatically scaled it. It's our fault, not AutoCAD's. That's okay. Now we're going to move this door. We're going to put it somewhere on the wall. Type in the letter M for move. Now you can see that the command is right up here. You can use that command, or you can type commands in on the keyboard across the command line. Either way works fine. Press Enter. and then. Pick the door. You can just pick it with your mouse. If you miss and you get a little window that looks like this thing, that's okay. Move it to the bottom and to the left of where you picked originally so that you get this green background with the dashed lines. And then cross that window across the door. That's called a crossing selection window. Click again. So you've picked it. Press enter. Type in these letters. E and D. 
This is for an endpoint snap. Press enter. This will grab an endpoint of an object. And that's what we want to do. We want to grab the endpoint of this line for the door. Left click. Now press the F8 button again. That will turn off our ortho setting. Otherwise, we were locked into just moving either left, right, or straight up and down. With your scroll wheel, scroll out till you can see your rectangle, and then scroll in. Now type in NEA. That's another snap point. It's called near. Press enter. And now just go somewhere on this bottom line and so that you see that little green hourglass looking glyph. That's the nearest glyph. Then left click. We've put a door in here. Quite simple. Now we're going to use what's called the trim command. So come up here, select trim, and pick down here to the left and the bottom of that door. Now move up to the right so that that blue area encloses the entire door. So it's all inside. This is called a selection window. To the bottom left is called a crossing window. This is a selection window. Everything inside here will be picked. Now left click. Now pick here. Now press enter. Now pick on the walls. Click here and click here. Zoom in and we're going to click here again. We've just trimmed our wall. Right click and then press enter. So you've just drawn a wall for a building and put a door into it. I know it doesn't seem real fancy, but these types of things are what you're going to be doing over and over again. Let's put some text in here. Click on this big black A, the text command, right here in the ribbon. Pick a point, move to the right, and down. Just eyeball it how I've shown you here. We can adjust all of this later. Left click again and type in garage. When you're done, just click somewhere around outside of this area. This is the text editor. You can see the ribbon changed. It's called a contextual ribbon tab. It changes based on the context of the command you're doing. It brings up a temporary ribbon tool so that you can have the tools available for what you're doing. Click outside, see it goes away. And now we have our text, but it's kind of small. Select it again, just pick somewhere arbitrarily up here, cross across the bottom, Pick again, we've selected that. Hit the scale button, zoom in, click right below it, and now drag your mouse up until you can see it. We're making things bigger with the scale command. There you go. And let's go back to our little tool palette here. Click on the vehicles imperial. Pick in here again. And we're going to use that scale trick again. Use the scale command. Pick what looks like part of this car. Press enter. Pick a point down here. Left click it. And then type in again 1 divided by 12. Enter. We just put in a car. Select the car. Now you see if you zoom in this blue box and this blue triangle. Click the blue triangle and let's go with the sports car top. We have different options. This is called a dynamic block. This block has some preset designs to it and you can change it on the fly. Right now we're set up to a side view of a sports car, but if I click sports car top, it changes to the top view of a sports car. Zoom out and press the escape key. Come up here to the move command, click move, select the car, left click it, press enter, Pick a point anywhere and now move it up a little bit. As you can see here, most of these AutoCAD commands have a series of events that have to happen. You start the command, whatever it is, and then you pick your first point. Type in MID for midpoint, press enter, and we're going to pick down here. Zoom in with your scroll wheel and get that green triangle. You see the green triangle? That's a midpoint glyph. That's an O snap. It's snapping right to the middle of that line. Left click and come up here. Type in P E R. That's an O snap for perpendicular. Press enter. 
and we're going to zoom in a little. You can even pan, and you see that little right angle looking symbol for the glyph? That's for a perpendicular O snap glyph. Left click, press enter or escape to finish your command, and you just drew a line. So these are just some of the basic tools that you're going to learn how to use. You're going to learn how to draw some lines, use different shapes like our rectangle, offset them, copy them, trim them, insert other objects into your drawing, draw a line, draw two lines. You can even draw some circles for whatever they need to be. It seems a little overwhelming right now with all of the buttons and all the panels that are up on the screen. I understand that. We're going to break it down and look at one thing at a time. And then we're going to show you how to apply them to a project. And we're going to slowly build on that project more and more until we work on our final project when you make a design drawing for a small movie theater.